I'm very honored to be back. Um, excited for our chat. And uh, yeah, I guess it's year two. We're in COVID now. So things uh, yeah. are much different from the last time we chatted. Yeah. Uh, I know we were, it was just the beginning of things. We didn't know what it was. It was uncertain. It was lockdown. Oh, yeah. Because it was really and, uh, at the beginning, wasn't it, that we chatted? It was quite early on, I think. I think so. If I recall, yeah. maybe in April we chatted. Yeah, it sounds yeah. about right. Yeah. So it was, you know, the beginning of lockdown. So uh, I'm in great spirits. I'm happy to be back. I'm still a little bit out of shape. <laughs> still the same guy. Um, what can we do? Well, and uh, still renovating my new home. I wouldn't want that to change, man, because you're a dude. So, um, and I, I really dig your social media stuff. So, I can see, I can see the genuine. I can see the how you're putting yourself out there, creatively wise. And with this film, um, is it minutes with Micah? Is that right? Mika, Mika. yeah, minutes. With Sorry, Mika. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I no really worries. appreciate that little posty design that's on the film freeway as well. Uh, the one I, I put. yeah, no problem. Um, but yeah. Um, hats off to you and you know i think it's really really great and last year um with your kind of kind of almost bollywood comedy i loved it because it kind yes. of connected with me so much because my missus is from a kind of rich indian family and um yeah it's it hit me it kind of like as soon as i saw the poster it was super bollywood yeah. i love that and I absolutely you know and it was really funny everyone that i spoke to about it after we, um, um, uh, I showed it to the team and all of that. And that's something I regret last year is not showcasing all of the films over, uh, over a weekend or online through our channel. So that's something mm. I need to rectify. And this year, I'm not making that mistake uh, because I kind oh. of, it's really difficult to do the live show and all of that and then put all the films in. So we're doing a, a, a full day of showing all the, all the officially selected films. And then yeah. the day after is our quote unquote live event and um the kind of award winners and honorary honorable picks and all of that because uh, we've got some really yeah. interesting judges again this year and yeah uh minutes with mika how did that start because it's i think it's brilliant i really do think it's excellent and it's so yeah, different what I'm, the reason i mentioned that your previous submission is mm -hmm. because it's so different it's such a departure for you from what i yeah. know of you in terms of your films and your performances mm -hmm. it's so different <laughs> i loved it i loved it so how did um, when did that start so how did that kind of kind of come to be yeah thank you so much for that um just uh, retracking a little bit from last year story of my life uh i listened to our podcast uh recently uh i would think it was last weekend yeah i remember promising you a part 2 uh since then a part 2 and a part 3 came out did you see the whole thing? Yeah, oh yeah, I loved yeah. it. Brilliant, yeah. It's my cup of tea, yeah. Yeah. So uh, we were able to wrap that story. Um, I was laid off and uh, and I was getting on fire, to be honest. I was uh, going back to auditions. I was getting more gigs. Everything was sort of coming to plan. And then I called Kyle back to work. And uh, so I had to wrap up my commitments. Uh, I got called back in September uh, lovely company. They pay me loads. Um, the job is very, you know, fairly easy for me. Uh, I enjoy doing it, helping my clients with car parts. We're in uh, aftermarket car parts. But um, every year, uh, there's some festivals that I like to hit. Like I like to hit yours. I like to hit the 48 hours. So I think, again, it was just sort of morphing the story of I wanted to do something different. Uh, I wanted to showcase a different side of me. Um, in one of our feature films that's uh, in post-production at the moment, I cry in it. So I feel like I've unlocked the crying feature. Um, awesome, yeah. And it's a different departure from, you know, people thinking Manny is fun or Manny's daring, Manny's fun to be around. So I think for the good part, to be very honest, I was hell-bent on sort of breaking away from that image, Yeah. you know? Because I think I've done a lot of funny stuff uh, comedic roles in my commercials and throughout my life that I was like, you know what? I need to change. Yeah. Um, I felt that this stalker character uh, was already, you know, you have some um, ideas your, that you your, form while your watching movies. Yeah. It's in your subconscious. Yes, subconsciously. <laughs> I'm like, okay, that's badass. I like that. Yeah, I like yeah, some yeah. elements from there. So I formulated 
the character was already formulated. The story came about uh, when I put together a team for the 48 hour film festival. So I put, uh, I got Sam Tomset, which was the producer of our film. And I got Michael Bruno. He's with Maestro Media House, a great buddy of mine. Uh, we've shot things in the past and I got him on for the 48 hour film challenge. And we were given um, a three elements, something in the movie, the genre of the film. And uh, it was one character. Did you do, was this for the 48 hour film challenge? Did you do everything in two days? Yes. You, yeah. You've got a talented team there. Correct. It, yeah, thank it you. seems like you spent more time on it, but in a, in a, that's a you know, that's positive right. comment. I think it was, yeah, you did so well in two days. Those, uh, that film was actually uh, supposed to be three minutes. So the original version uh, goes straight to vlogging and me going after the girl. Right. But uh, we did want to stretch the film out. Uh, I wanted to add some more scenes of myself in it as well. Uh, sort of explore, do different things. So uh, we got together in February and we shot some more. So we can, um, you know, extend the film. It's like a dir uh, extended director's cut. And uh, we can get into the one in 10 minutes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm happy I... that you have that uh, option yeah. this year. Because uh, I'll tell you the truth, I was gunning on at three minutes. Um, there's a new idea that I have, much uh, sort of the little chase sort of thing that we did with Story of My Life. Yeah, uh, It's called Briefcase, so I'm putting it out there. It's another promise I'm making. Uh, awesome. um, I had an idea for Briefcase. We shot it, and I don't think I was fully... Uh, content with what we shot and it has nothing to do with anybody I just think all the players came together that day we all had our own idea we shot it um, I looked at the end product and um, it needed more work so you know we have a film that's already completed so I put in yeah. minutes with Mika this time around um, uh, in the on, festival. just on that note was obviously everyone was looking at the same script but do you think that everyone was kind of running parallel to each other and not making the same film? Do you find it was something that everyone was looking at the material in different ways? Um, for minutes with Mika, you're saying? No, uh, no, for the other one that didn't quite. Oh, work. briefcase. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm, you know what? I think what really happened there is I executed briefcase in the same scenario that I did for Story of My Life. Yeah, But with story of my life, I had my cousin. I have some real good friends that understand me versus I feel in this situation, I went ahead and I hired a team, much like Minutes with Mika. Um, and, you know, the product came out as it did. So there are some things that are missing. And uh, maybe we try to rush it a bit, too. I think sometimes it comes down to scheduling and the people that are available. Somebody's only available in the morning. Somebody's only really available in the, in the yeah. afternoon. So that juggling, uh, I guess, becomes tough. And I guess mm. directing and acting when you're wearing a lot of hats, um, you know, you can sort of a little bit lose track of uh, what is shot and what your, what your end goal and your end product supposed to be. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, hats off to them though. They did a really good job, but uh, what's happening with briefcases? I'm spinning it. We're doing a series okay. with a new team uh, right. that I've got. Um, they're called Brar Films, so I'm very honored. I'm a Brar myself. That's my last name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got a team, Brar Films. We're uh, spinning the idea. It's going to be instead of a three minutes, um, we're going to stretch it out in parts. Um, there's going to be more dialogue. And again, we're going to slow pace it now that we have time with it. So I'm quite happy the way it's turning out regardless. Sounds we have like a base a, plate of, of what yeah. we shot. So we know I, I could show them something of what I feel. And then they're just going to pick up, pick it up from there. It sounds healthier sometimes. Like, you know, squeeze. If you just try to squeeze for me, mm -hmm. I think a three minutes version of this film that you submitted, uh, Minutes with Mika, I think it would have been nice, but I see where the reasoning for having a longer film. It's not just, oh yeah, let's just pad it out. It yeah. really makes sense to have the extra material because you see the motivation. You see mm -hmm. even like close-ups of your hands that may have already been in the previous cut, like your frustrations with 
like your obsession, you know, the obsession shines through. And I absolutely, absolutely love that. I love films about obsession, like the fan or one hour photo. Uh, yeah. Woodsman is like, he's fighting with his inner demons because he's uh, Kevin Bacon plays a pedophile in that film. And uh-huh. he's, he lives uh, across from like to, near a school and almost like resisting his, you know, the evil urge he has inside him. And I, I really, yeah, I think he really, really did a great job of what you set out. Like, right, I'm seen as, you know, the fun-loving guy, Manny, Manny the dude, you know, have, you know, have a good time, have a good drink and all that, which is all true. But then yes, that's the thing. you can get typecast so easily. Um, and I think this is, this is going to do you the world of good. I really do believe that. And, uh, you know, I, I really hope it does because I think it's uh, a really good performance, a really good idea. It's so on the money. Um, mm. And like, there's a, I can't remember the film, what the film's called, but there's a, there's a film with the guy that's got the really good hair like yours in it from stranger things about a, he's like a Lyft driver or an Uber driver. And basically he turns into a serial killer. He, he picks people up and kills them. And he, blo- uh-huh. he, he vlogs the entire thing. He films everything. And yeah. this sits nicely next to that in terms of like uh, commentary on uh, modern media uh, and obsession and not picking, like for her, not picking up on signs. <laughs> like, <laughs> what's that? What's the, what's the, uh, it's not a spoiler. What, was, what do you say in the, Oh, do you know if they sell clocks or something like that? And it's Correct. Like, it's like a fruit stand yeah. or something <laughs> or a vegetable <laughs> store. I was like, that's amazing. Yeah. And you know, we, um... they all say stupid things, you know, like um, like and then they're following, you know, the little the shot where you kind of vent your frustrations to the world. And I kind of like the low angle and you're like shouting out and all of that. Um, but yeah, I um I really, really enjoyed it. I know everyone that is going to see it in because we've got a smaller team this year. It's just myself and Nadia and a couple of other people. Um, Nadia Glitz. Yeah, she's great. Yeah. Nadia's kind of uh, helping with so much of it. And she produces the uh, this as well. You know, we kind of work on the uh, who we're going to uh, speak to and all of that. And yeah, I think I think you've really. I think it'll do really well in festivals. I think it'll do really well for your show reel. Um, yeah, so yeah. I think. How did the? Did you write it on your own, or did you write it with someone else? No, it was. Uh, I was just gonna get into that. Hmm. We, when you do a forty-eight hours, you have to. They give you the elements at oh, seven like, p.m. on okay. Friday, and then you have to submit the completed, edited, final product on Sunday at seven p.m. Yeah. So at seven o'clock, I logged on with my teammate, my producer. We got the elements. We got the line. Uh, we got, you know, alarm clocks was a thing that was in it. So I'm showing my friends and they're like, what is going on? Like, why would you see alarm clocks? You know, like you can come up with anything better. Yeah. <laughs> it's much like the character, right? So some of the things, you know, um, some of the elements are in it for that purpose. Mm-hmm. But, you know, for the extended cut, we just, you know, with her YouTube vlogs, we've added some sort of scenes in me, a little bit extended of this shaving, a little bit just, you know, extend, cut, and added some of those. We came about the story, me, Michael, the director, and uh, Sam, the producer. They said, Manny, what do you want to do? So we had the choice between Western and thriller, suspense thriller, Western. And I said, okay, like, you know, we can do Western, but it is COVID. We started looking at the locations, some of the connections we have, putting our ideas out. And for sure, Thriller Suspense was something I wanted to do more anyways. So we did Suspense Thriller and uh, the three of us cooked up a story. <laughs> a creepy one. Yeah, uh, yeah at, that, at that moment, I think at 10 p.m. we got yeah. together. I was hungry as hell. Um, I didn't eat. It was, again, a work night. We cooked up the story. And I think we finalized it. I finalized it at 4 p.m. Or 4 a.m. at night. That's Uh, six hours of us going back and forth. Yeah, I like this idea. I don't. I didn't think it was solid. I didn't think some of my ideas were solid. At 4 a.m., 
we put the cat in the bag. We said, okay, 95% of it is going to look like this. And then the other five is just, we're going to leave it up to the magic. Yeah. Um, we came together with that story. Uh, the girl that we got, her name's Sarah Freya. She's very smashed, beautiful. She cute smashed girl. it out of the park. She smashed the, yeah, she's just knocked it out of the park with the role. Yeah. Um, and again, I had 48 hours to find my cast. I didn't have a lot of time to look like who's great. Look at demo reels, so how anything did you, like that. How did you find her then? Was that someone you knew or? Um, you know what? We had, I had another story in mind. So I was looking for a lot of females. There's a lot of females that message me. And I said, you know what? Let me just put the word out, place the females on hold. And if something happens, we can release them, which sucks. I don't like doing it. Um, you know, oh, the yeah. team that I work with, yeah. we like to mentor and encourage and bring up in new coming talent. Um, so she was one of the girls, one of the four girls I held for this other idea that we had. Now that we at 4 a.m., we finalized this, went to bed up at 8 a.m., four hours sleep, you know, back to my friends. And we started looking at that and I had an hour to choose really my cast. So I messaged I her, uh, Sarah. She was available. I I just went by feel. I went by her pictures. I said, okay, this is somebody um, that could be opposite of me. That could, you know, give give a, a good sort of um, a good challenge. A great actor. Yeah. Um, so she fit the part already. She's already been doing videos. And when we got her, we said, hey, we, you just have to play like a parody of you, just you, just with the volume turned up. Oh, wow. um, okay. And uh, she was great with the lines, great at understanding her character. And it just made our lives easier, to be very honest. And that 48 hours, so sometimes you don't she, have time to... That's so true. Was she yeah. an actress? She's an actor, yeah. She's a very strong actor. She's a theater actor, actually. Yeah, she's, she was really good. It, the casting, I, I think the kind of pressure you were under with the, the 48 hour challenge and the four hours even the four hours sleep there's something that makes you like the juice of producing mm. some, producing a short and yeah i think the pressure really worked for you <laughs> in many yeah. ways and the casting it and it was very smart i understand the process um i'll tell you a little secret i'll keep this in the episode but yeah um we did 37 episodes of the filmmakers podcast last year and we wanted to make sure we got we released as many as we could within the period of the actual festival. So hopefully we'll release all 15. Last year, they stretched out past the end of the festival. And obviously I felt as though it lost a bit of energy. So uh, I offered, as soon as I knew you, you were on the podcast, basically there's a couple of people who wanted definitely on it just because, you know, uh, uh, you know, friendship and all of that. And um, I kind of offered it to most people and said, uh, I offered it to all the s- official uh, submission of filmmakers saying you've mm-hmm. got to, you've got to get in as soon as possible. Uh, there's only 15 slots. So I did say there's 15 slots, but I didn't tell them straight away and clear that up. Yeah. And it makes complete sense for your casting your film because you're under a lot of pressure to, to get it right. Mm-hmm. And you know, you've got to, that's how you cast things sometimes, you know, like actors get callbacks all the time and, they just keep liking and then they kind of shed, they shed those, those uh, people they liked and, ah, oh, he's not quite right. Well, maybe you get him for something else. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I think casting was excellent. I think um, you could have, if you had time, you could have cast the, your role, but I think you, it would have been a mistake to do that. I think you did a really good job and you really showcased your skills as an actor. Thank um, you. Honestly, I, honestly, it's not. I'm not blowing smoke up your ass, as we say. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, I really, I thought I was like, yeah. initially when I watched the film, I got right. I didn't know anything about it. That's what I loved. Mm-hmm. We didn't discuss. That's what, what I wanted. Yeah. And I thought, okay, what's this? Oh, it's. And then, oh, I thought this was going to be a comedy. I didn't just assume because of your personality and you know your what kind of warmth on the internet and how we spoke last time. Um, but as soon as I realized it wasn't that kind of thing, I was like, yeah, this is good. <laughs> it's funny because uh yeah the first scene seems a little bit like hey you know it might uh it might be a nice film you know might just be a yeah a little sort of thriller um but yeah certainly you know we up the ante and uh if there's ever a part two which i'm pitching really hard for it yeah um 
there's going to be, uh, you know, for sure the production value will be up. Uh, there might be more few kills. Who knows? Let's see yeah. where it takes us. But I really like uh, the way it all wraps up. Yeah. Oh, I love the... I, I don't really want to give a spoiler, but the ambiguous, you know, kind of ending. Uh, yeah. But there's little details I wanted to kind of talk about because I, I love the minutiae, the small things, you know. Um, uh-huh. The fact... Oh, I don't really want to give a spoiler, but the, the you know, the the fake package you know the mm-hmm. the box it's in the fact that you yeah. use an amazon box it's an amazon it, it gives a believability yeah. to the person that's receiving it that's all i'll say about the film and you that's just true. assume it's real because people get amazon all the time uh, yeah and if if a package was delivered here my my missus ordered something i didn't know about i just yeah i'll take that in i wouldn't mm-hmm. you know and the, the door and the hand on the door and all of that. Yeah, it really sold it for me. So, yeah, yeah. I was like, ah, oh, right, okay. I, I'd believe that. I'd, I'd trust that person with an Amazon package. Because you get here, I don't know what it's like uh, where, where you are, but Amazon packages sometimes get delivered by really random people in cars. You know, it's not, oh. always, it's not always a van. Sometimes it's a little micro or something like that. And a lady I recognize quite a few times and we've just got a new little dog. So I'm very conscious of it being stolen because that's a big thing in COVID dogs being stolen. Yeah. And that's the thing. I, I almost trust this woman because I've seen her a few times, but she turns up in a car with my Amazon packages. Yeah. Very strange. You don't see a, a normal, you know, a van. Um, so yeah. Um, I think the, the idea, it really, it really works in many, many ways. Uh, and what what does he what does he buy? He buys something of hers, doesn't he? What's uh, that? Sorry, doesn't it? Doesn't um, your character in the film buy something from her or order something? Uh, yes, um, it's those gold, it's those wonderful glasses. I right? thought I thought that was super super sharp because <laughs> you kind of um, this is this is the kind of the biggest thing about it is as. In a in a positive way, you look funny, not like a funny look, but you know, oh, he's such a good dude, that kind of look. That's what I mean. But yes. as soon as you put those glasses on, it's almost like transformed into this further, darker, sinister person, you know. Mm-hmm. And there's some really sinister. There's like, I think it's really well written. I really do. Um, Thank you. And the like the scene with the family on the street, I'm like. Oh, this is getting creepy now. This is really, really <laughs> creepy. Oh, I'll yeah. babysit and all of that. You know, it's like, yeah, okay. I'm like, <laughs> well, oh, where's where's money? Where's money going? With this? Yeah, where's money going with this? You know, <laughs> and uh, that's what I was thinking. I, I was I was really engrossed. I'm like, we've seen some. Last year we had you know a whole mix of films. We had tick, a TikTok video which we accepted, but if we'd have gotten that this year, we wouldn't have because it was just. It wasn't even really a film, you know. It, we've mm-hmm. had experimental films this year from all over the world. We've had animations again. We had uh, a CG animation from Japan, and it's really, Ooh. really killer. Um, so we've I had a really interesting that, yeah. mix. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you'll get to see all of them. And uh, yeah, it's yeah. I was really, really happy about this. Really happy about this. And. Um, what was the film shot on? Do you know what cameras we used? Because I'm always curious. What was it? Yeah, you know what? No, uh, I don't know. Because I think there was two different cameras used. Hmm. Um, initially, we had uh, hired somebody. He's got, uh, it's a wonderful gentleman by the name of ESEF. I don't even know his real name. That's what I just call him, ESEF. <laughs> that's his Instagram handle. <laughs> right, right. So right. Uh, he had a camera. Um, and then uh, Maestro Media House uh, completed the shoot with his camera. It was lovely um, yeah. this year. Yeah, yeah. Some of those shots. So just some of the yeah. some of the touches need to be done. Uh, yeah, there's color a, there's some wise. color grades like missing, isn't there? That's it. Yeah, just very small touches, but it's all there. The funny thing about the Amazon package is that yeah, um, at least in Toronto, or at least the people that come around my house usually it will be FedEx or like Puro or somebody. Uh, sometimes it's a white van. I have been skeptical sometimes, some Hondas and things like that, right? You just don't know in this world. It could just be 
uh, a person that's delivering it. And again, no real uniform. And uh, mm, some of the yeah. things get left outside. Oh, so yeah. it could be easily stolen. Um, yeah, like I work from home, so everything's good. I see, you know, from my balcony, who's coming, who's not. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, again, it comes down to one of those things where it's like, anybody really can deliver anybody can be an uber driver what for me i thought was that if the audience is going to question me delivering wearing her glasses is she not noticing any of that just me missing my beard you know i'm doing like the superman clark kent sort of switch in that sort of uh time in the film so um i just uh, i guess as an actor questioning if you know if she should recognize me or not at that incident uh, at the door you know because we just uh, i guess interacted in the film at the the grocery market right but you know you know how that worked the reason that worked so well is mm-hmm. because of the personality she is she doesn't give yes. a shit. she doesn't give a shit who delivers the packages yeah exactly you know I mean? but so, she probably has a lot of fans she doesn't make eye contact does she uh, i don't think because I, I'm not sure if she I'd have does. to look at the footage. I think she looks at me, but she's not thinking yeah. anything other than uh, about you know, the th- that it's it, me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and we just sure to show like. Uh, sorry, the phone's going off on my house, but oh, don't worry, don't worry. If you need to answer um, it, don't worry. Ah, huh, no, no, it's. Uh, I never it's, answer it's, my house. It's a, it's a delivery. You're getting a fake one. <laughs> yeah, it's those, it's those scammers calling me. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. For me, yeah, it was uh, more of questioning about that. But I think, uh, you know, the, the idea is that she has a lot of fans. So for her recognizing me, one out of the so many, um, that's the sort of idea we went with that she just would not recognize him with the glasses and all that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the turn that it, when I put the glasses on and it becomes sinister, I really like that. I really like the moment. So I got to give congrats to my team. They pulled it off. You know, in that 48, and now we did an extended cut. And uh, so glad you did the extended cut. I'd be really curious so about the shorter one. I almost don't actually, I almost don't want to see the shorter version because now I'm so happy I've seen th- this one. You know, this is the main one, I would say. Yeah, that yeah. one was for festival purposes. I think this one is the one we're riding with. Yeah. yeah. And I, I love all the scenes in the park and all of that. Um, one thing yeah. I wanted to say, Alex, uh, we were shooting with the producer's dog and we were also <laughs> shooting with the child, which, by the way, the, both the animal and uh, the child were fantastic. Because um, there's a cliche, isn't there, about never work with children? I, I was just going to say that. I wanted to ask yeah. you. Yeah, because, you know, they say don't work with dogs and don't work with kids. But given the time and it was the extended cut, I didn't have any problem. Maybe I'm just a fun guy on set. I had a lot of fun with Naya. Uh, her mother energy, was great. It's energy you put out, isn't it? Like if you watch the behind the scenes and in interviews with Spielberg about when he shot ET, he hmm. was he didn't become a child when he directed it, but he made it really fun for them. Like mm-hmm. Drew Barrymore and the other kids, um, um, I can't remember the, the 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 two brothers and all of that. He made it super fun for them and engaged with them and respected them and. Yeah, that's what that's what makes it work, and it sounds like the your the energy you were putting across when you were wanting to shoot this was exactly the same as that. You know, it's yes, you make it make them super comfortable. Otherwise, children that get ratty and aren't happy <laughs> are the worst. Yeah. I I was one. I, we were both one. You know, we were both there when we were kids. So yeah, it, that sounds really positive. That's really great that 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 was that was a good experience for them as well. It was, yeah. I think um, the better you make it for your crew, the better you make it for your talent, I feel like they're going to bring that energy into your product. So it's a win-win. Um, and, I've, and I've always been a guy that's uh, willing to help. You know, I don't think putting down somebody or, uh, you know, arguing about the root of the problem really makes, you know, that much any sense. And it's like I had to do none of that in this film. So... I guess I'm very grateful that I don't come across these situations, but I'm very prepared. But um, yeah, you know, like uh, I remember Naya. Yeah, we we just did fun things, you know, behind the scenes and stuff, kept her cheered up um, and she was quite happy. uh, Lovely girl. And, you know, we let her choose the name of the dog, Fritz. 
um, because <laughs> I think we had another name and she couldn't say it. So we said, just use the name of your dog. And she's like, my dog is Fritz. So we said, okay, the dog is Fritz. Um, so sometimes changes on the fly happen, little things like that, nothing really big. Um, mm -hmm. But I think that's something that I was telling my, uh, my team for briefcase, the, the fun little series that I'm going to do. And I'm awesome, going to, yeah. you know, for sure, send you the link. And Please I want do. you to see yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, I think the goal is, you know, just to, I, I've been doing this for a good 12 I would say years on and off. And um, the goal is just to nurture talent, bring them up, give people a chance. I was there. I thought, you know, I was the man all the time. You know, even in year one, I'm like, okay, I'm going to get into acting. It's probably going to take me five years. I'm going to blow off. Um, didn't quite go that way. And I'm quite happy. It's never been... Um, uh, you can't really call that, you know what I mean? You can't really give yourself a timeline. Things take their own time and, you know, the world sort of revolves and goes around yeah. its course. So um, that's what I feel that these people, you know, some, some people are great. Some of these guys, I see their demo reels, they're killer. They're not getting any gigs. Things like that are happening. So it could I, just um... be that the individual is not marketing themselves right. Maybe they don't have an agent. There's all these things that... I was fortunate enough and I was, you know, um, I was looking out for myself and I did my research and thank God things worked out and things, you know, just keep working out for me. So that's what I want to do for briefcases just to, you know, bring that next tier of talent up, give them a demo reel, help them elevate. Um, Cause there's some guys that, you know, sure they're great actors and I'm not really worried about them because they book gigs, you know, we're going to help yeah. the other one here that, um, you know, are on that cusp, we just need to raise them. That's exactly and, uh, what Jason Bloom does with his horror films. You know, Bloomhouse. He gives, yeah, Bloomhouse. He gives younger, younger directors and directors that have had a bit of a fall in their career, like a, a lower budget, but you get total control on what you do. And his, yeah. his ethos, obviously, small budgets, huge profits, that kind of thing with like Get Out and The Invisible Man, especially mm -hmm. those, those two. And yeah, I, I got total respect for that, man. I think it's a, I think it's a wonderful idea because, you know, if you see someone that's on a career path and they're doing really well, they don't need that support necessarily. Well, don't necessarily need that support. And I think, you know, it, nurturing young talent is super important. And that's what we've found in terms of the festival as well is supporting young filmmakers. And I think it's great what you're doing, man. I think it's a really, it's such a good kind of positive thing to put out there. And when you look back at your, you know, in, x amount of years you look back at what you've done it it'll give you so much kind of comfort and there's be it's such a nice thing to do being nice and helping mm -hmm. other people in one way or another is is great you know you get gratification yourself but you're helping other people and that's a really wonderful thing especially the last couple of years especially yes. last year being able wow. to support people in many ways is is great like We've got, uh, there was a young filmmaker that made um, a film last year and I've not put the post out yet. I'm, I'm speaking to her mom about it. She, she's she been really ill, like seriously ill. And um, Tegan, Tegan Sellers, we support you. And um, yeah, it's, I've asked her mom to kind of put a post together, then we're going to post it. And she's just been going through the, the ringer, you know, in terms of being, you know, and I just wanted to support her and her mum's super grateful. And, you know, mm -hmm. if you kind of pass it forward, um, you kind of positive, positive energy, it's just going to be so beneficial. And I think the positive energy you put out, even though you made a film about something super creepy, yeah. um, I think you it bear, bear fruit for you because it's re this is the best compliment I can give it. It's a proper film. It's a proper solid short film. Honestly, yeah. it really, really, really is. Um, I've only seen like one or two other things that you've done, but this mm -hmm. is, this is really, really. Um, have you already started putting this in other festivals as well? The longer, I uh, know you're the first one. Yeah, we're trying. This is going to do you, really Alex. well. This is going to do really well. Honestly, thank really you. Well. I really thank believe you. in it, and anything that I can do past this as well, because um, I, you know, I think you're you're a top you're a top guy, and I think this film is excellent. I really, really do. Because the the whole thing, like, it's really, really well written. Like the scenes mm -hmm. in the park, 
uh, I won't say too much, but the obsession of trying to copy her and do the, do his own thing and the frustrations and all of that, that will, that will connect with so many um, young filmmakers and anyone that's trying to do something on the internet, become a YouTuber, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> that obsession with other people is massive. Like I'm, like I've improved my shot. My, you know, the other time, the last time we spoke, this is blue wall here. I, yeah. I just want to create it how I look. I know this is all very YouTubery, having things aligned. This room's normally like there's a grenade gone off. It's always messy. If you look at the floor, <laughs> if you look at the floor, I've got a 95 year old person's jacket and hat from a from, from Vicky's granddad from years ago. Yeah. And it's messy. And I just want to create something pleasant so it looks more professional because I'm always like he, like clearly you have the last year is stepping your game up every single time you have to yeah, yeah. you have to make it like i'm wearing pajama bottoms which is a, <laughs> but it's like it's what's here you know I, i'm i'm trying to create the best like upgraded all my gear and got some extra yeah. lights and all of that and yeah you've really this is not meant to sound like a oh you've never you've never been at this level but this film has is going to elevate you it absolutely is I really do believe. Thank you. Yeah, Alex. It's uh, again. It's just, I think, is uh, upping the ante every year. I just do it. I just do it to myself. You know. Yeah. I, um, I'm, I'm just, so glad you submitted. I'm so glad you're just trying to challenge. Year, yeah. Just trying to do different. Um, a lot of things I do by my gut, how I feel the day of, the week of. Um, it'll never be something that, you know, I just look at and be like, okay, unless it's the 48 hours. Um, but a lot of things I do want to plan, put in my thought, execute well. Um, mm. so, you know, when things like this come and I do send you a film yeah. that, uh, you know, it's it something, to- it's, uh, so it's exciting. Off- it's, yeah. yeah, it's different. It's it surprising. Off- and, yeah. um, yeah. it's, you know, I guess, yeah, you, you know, if, uh, if you want to be better, yeah, you got to be real with yourself. You got to check yourself a lot of times. Absolutely. Um, you can't let Absolutely. it get to your head and uh, just challenge yourself. I think a lot of the actors I thought to, um, I'm going to tell you a funny story. Like a lot of my friends, especially this year, I don't know, COVID's hit them or the tax man's got them really hard. They're looking at me and they're like, wow, you've got a wonderful life, Manny. I think I can do that. You know, I think I think I can do that. So, you know, a lot of them want to get into the game, but they don't know the iceberg of the 12 years of, uh, you know, not getting auditions. Yeah, I was watching told you're not good. I was watching an interview with Jeff Daniels and it took yeah. him decades, almost 30 years to get a career. Uh-huh. It, it really did. Like it was like he was talking about the scene that's in the newsroom. Um, I don't know if you see the Aaron Sorkin series about a, um, a newsroom, and it's like a, it's um, you know obviously brilliantly written. Aaron Sorkin's like a, a, a world class writer. And I did hear the Je- name. Yeah. Jeff Ta- Jeff Daniels is talking about the pilot episode, and there's a, an a amazing scene where this student, college student, says, "Can you tell us why?" America's the the US is the greatest country in the world and Daniels is talking about this speech he had to give and he's like this scene's mine this show's mine I've been working so long and all, and the way he's his passion and he talked about his career and it took so long to get there it's when you're not in the game um and you see someone that's doing well it's not necessarily a jealousy thing oh yeah that'll only take five a uh, few years like you said even you said it yourself before he said, "Oh yeah. yeah, I'll I'll smash it in five years' time." Yeah, you no, know, it's in small increments. It, you can then have something that's like, um, what do you call it? The Zemeckis grenade from Ready Player One. That's like all all powerful, and you know, and and you get you get like a you get a guest star, you know, a role on a Netflix show or something. Mm-hmm. It's like it's all graft and who sees what, and this little bit of kind of magic dust that happens and. You know, I think it's it's really nice to see your progress, even just in a year, man. It really is. Thank you. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, I was just going to say, um, yeah, as uh, in terms of, uh, you know, people being like, yeah, you know, that looks easy and things like that, you know, 
sometimes, uh, uh, and it's never really all malicious, it's all fun, but sometimes it almost seems like it's, you know, it's, uh, if I went to them and I said, hey, move over, let me take your wife, your car, your boat, and your house, and let me just carry forward. It doesn't work like that, you know? Yeah. Um, maybe you see on TV, like the good doctor, and uh, on the show, he makes surgeries, looks easy, and, you know, maybe he's able to save lives. And maybe, yeah, it is things that we can do, but do we know how to do them? There's a technique. Um, and some of these things, you know, as I grew up as well as a person, um, they take a little bit of time, you know? I don't think I was always... Um, I wasn't always like this maybe in the first or the second year. I was maybe a little bit more shy than I thought, you know, and maybe sometimes it shows on camera when you're uncertain, when you don't know your lines. So a bunch of things comes into, you know, um, in, in your performance rather than just, you know, thinking you're the part or knowing your lines and things like that. And it's, it's something uh, I, I'll, I won't go on a tangent too much, but my friends, I tell them, I'm like, I'm like this other friend. We have another friend who's a cop. We go to spots and we go to places. Not now, we did. Um, you know, and it's not like he wants the whole joint to know that he's a cop. Because if something goes down, they're looking at him. They're looking at our table to save the day. Same thing when I go with my friends, you know, they're like, oh, yeah, he's an actor and stuff. Um, whether it be to you know, hit on girls or whether it be, uh, you know, just to get some sort of notoriety and stuff, which I don't do. Um, some of my friends know that very well. It's not, uh, it's not how I portray myself. But again, yeah, it's sort of those things where, oh, you're an actor, eh? uh, you know, why don't you perform this monologue for me and things like that, right? So it's never really, it's never really like that. And that's the perfect example that I can give. It's, you know, it's same thing as a police officer. Yeah, he's well equipped, but he's off duty. And we got to respect that. You know? Totally agree. I, I see see that every day. Like in terms of a technical point of view, I've, I've been doing like video editing. That's how I really started almost mm. 20 years ago um, at college. And I was uh, editing sports events and creating montages. And that's where my passion for the technicalities of film really, really came to bear fruit in, in uh, what I was putting out. Um, mm. And yeah, that, that kind of, Right. I'm going to continue to make fit things. I'm going to continue to work on things, shoot my own stuff eventually. Because I was always scared to shoot my own stuff because I thought, ah, no one's going to watch this and all of that. Um, yeah. But when I started to really, you know, five years or so ago, when I started doing my own shorts or getting to professional drone photography, that kind of thing, mm. I, when it's like when you quote a price, like for a private um, uh, freelance gig, like shooting yeah. something like the last few days I've been shooting little promo things for a company and mm -hmm. they think, Oh, this, uh, they almost ask you to justify the price. Well, it's fucking 20 years of experience. Yeah. You know, you're, it, it's really frustrating. It's really difficult because, because they don't really see what, you know, uh, what they're paying for. I'm like, this is what you get. This is mm -hmm. my experience. Here's the show reel. Now yeah. pay me what I, pay me what I want yeah. and what I've quoted you or go somewhere else. I don't say it like that, but you know, it's always pleasant trees and you dance around saying that. Yes. But it's like, it's, I do it all day. <laughs> the misunderstanding of it, man, the misunderstanding of, Oh, well, money's got all this. He's having a great life. They don't know like the difficulties you may have gone through in your own life. They may don't know the financial implications of what your life's been like, you know, the, the stresses and all of that. And acting yeah. from all the actors I know, um, like yourself and many others, it's super stressful and the anxiety and the, oh, I'm not good enough for this and all of that. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of actors, there's a lot of actors. And I spoke to some, you know, a good chunk of them uh, for the festival last year as well that yeah. don't produce their own content, like don't produce their own shorts. And I think that's a real, real, like you've got to do it. Because how are you going to put yourself on tape? Self tapes are great; they really are. But if yeah. you start making short films, like um, there's an actor from last year. He he did a film called uh, Twitch. Um, so it, Michael Michael Chan's one of the judges. He's part of. Oh the, yeah, I heard uh, Michael Chan's a Toronto guy, right? Yeah, my, he is yeah. a really really great guy. 
Um, I do a podcast with his. It seems uh, like it from his uh, socials. Yes. Yeah, he's uh, he's TikTok's madness. It's so. Funny. Uh, yeah, is it okay? I'm gonna add him. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, I, I he's, heard about he's him. super talented, and he produced who he, he produced a film called The Only Asian, and it was about. Uh, I think I get this right about um, the agents he's part of will only allow one Asian in the um, in the pool of actors that they have. And then he's on a conference call yeah. with this other female a- Asian actress. And they're like, oh, we're at the same agency. How's that possible that there's only one Asian? And it's a brilliant, it's supposed to be a comedy, but it's like a, a commentary on um, race and everything as well. And it's a brilliant idea. And he produces his own content. Like he's he's smashing it on TikTok. He's very funny. He does this thing about dad jokes as well. It's really great. And he does a yeah. lot of voiceover stuff and all that. And yeah. I've got more power to you and people like Michael for creating your own content because, you know, we've all got families, responsibilities, job, Joe jobs, as Michael puts it. And yeah, it's, um, you know, it's to put your stuff out there. You know, it's, it's brave to do produce your own stuff. So mm-hmm. I, I started drinking a, a, a fizzy drink and it's really kind of <laughs> no worries. It's like crypto it's late night I, for you. Yeah, it's crypto night like when I do these interviews, you know, I like end up burping off off uh, off mic. Um mm-hmm. but yeah, it's uh yeah, you've got to produce your own content. So when you did, have when, to. I'm not sure if I ever asked you, when did you start producing your own shorts? Have you always done that? No, you know what? And uh I just want to retrack and I want to give a shout out to Tegan. We're with you. Um, I think it was during the pandemic. Um, I was listening to a podcast and I was listening to Larissa Mayer, who's a very popular casting director. Um, I had an audition for her recently. Um and something she said, you know, there's a lot of things that, you know, people say and they stick in your head. This one stuck to me because she was like, you know, the, the problem that we're having is that some people, some of the actors think they're great, but we, you know, we can't look at all of them or everybody, you know, uh, casting directors will get a tape. You could be the greatest actor, but if your tape isn't that great, if your lighting isn't there, you know, some technicalities could be a bunch of things. If your self tape isn't there. Uh, they don't have a real reason or you're not giving them chances to hire you. Let's say that. Right. So she was like, you know, for the actors that are not doing anything um, or think that, you know, they are good or, you know, can do other things, they should shoot their own stuff. So my problem has always been, I usually get my mom or my sister to do my self tapes um, you know, they'll read in and stuff or they'll hold the cam. Um, so, you know, after hearing her and hearing a few casting directors, I've decided to get the O-ring for the camera, uh, the O-ring light. I have a blue background. So I upped my uh, game on the gear as well, on the self tape gears, because I know for the future, this is what's going to happen in two, you know, for the next while until COVID's there. But just getting back to that point, she said record... Uh, how you see yourself. So story of my life came about like that. Some of the things that I've been shooting, um, you know, just uh, before the pandemic started, when I started my job, it was exactly that, you know, like, I was like, okay, I'm not acting, I'm not getting any gigs, or the few auditions that I do get, you know, there are a bunch of self tapes, that's what I'm going to do, but I'm, I'm not pumping out new content, if they don't hire me. And I said, they're not going to hire me in this light, in a comedic light, if I just keep doing, you know, the the comedic commercials and stuff like that. So, you know, I needed to branch out and I, uh, the, you know, some of the comedic stuff that I do is is great. And I think I do it well and I'm, I'm blessed. And I, you know, I find if an idea isn't to my humor or my level, I don't put it out. But yeah, just her saying those words was like, okay, well, I got to start shooting my own stuff. So I got in touch with my friends. They're shooting a bunch of indie things. Um, And uh, when we started talking last year, the industry was just on a hold. And sometimes, you know, I can't sit still. I'm like, let's do a part two. Let's do a part three and a four and a five. Let's keep going. I got a lot of juice 
I want to be shooting all the time, you know? So I think it just came down to things like that. And um, a little bit of just believing in yourself, mm-hmm. you know, believing Absolutely. in your idea, um, attempting, you know, like I told my guys that we shot briefcase. I said, Hey, don't be discouraged. We tried to shoot something. Failing is doing zero, you know, but if you actually try to shoot some of your own stuff, you try to put it together, you know, at a TikTok level, at a YouTube level, whatever. I just think putting it, just trying is, is the basis of, of actually going for the win. Yeah. And yeah, that was sort of morphed into, I went to my book of ideas. I started looking at them, you know, sometimes uh, after a few drinks, I look at them in a different light. Um, but it's just perfecting what you have and showcasing yourself now. And I don't think it's, it's, uh, it's easy for everybody. Some people think that it's, it can't be done. I can't form a team together to shoot my idea. It's very simple. I tell my friends, this has all the answers of the world. And if you just try, you can make it happen. If you just try to create a Facebook group saying, I need this, this, and this, trust me, people are, are sitting at home. They want to work. You know, That's and then so it's just true. time of uh, it's just I mean, a matter of you connecting with the right beeps. Go ahead, totally, sorry. totally agree with that. Absolutely agree with that because I'm always itching to shoot something. Like I've got this little project that was supposed to be just a an advert for a, a Roman tour company because the che- the city I live the uh, city I live in Chester is a, a Roman city and yeah, there's tour groups in the city and all of that. But I I wanted to do uh, like a Roman short film, but it was also a promo and there's a reveal and then the tour logo appears. But then it's actually a Roman ex- short film. You said. Yeah, because okay. the, the company I, I'm working with, and it's it's been storyboarded in that book for two years, and oh. um, with you know COVID and everything, it got put on the back burner for a long while. Um, mm. And we shot a te- uh, it's on my social media. We shot a test thing because I wanted to shoot it in anamorphic because I've got anamorphic adapters. Um, I want to shoot it like two forty by one, really wide. Um, because I think that it there's there's aesthetic things like of a, a, a period films, especially that I don't. For me, when I see something that's like Roman or something, I don't see it being handheld. I see it being mm-hmm. on a tripod and wide shots, close ups, that kind of thing. It's just yeah. like little rules I like to kind of stick with with what I, the aesthetic I like. Yes. And it's actually the enthusiasm after the test from that company. They said, yeah. We've got two people on uh, two black horses. They've got the full Roman outfits, but they're they're super high end. They're not cosplay. Mm. They're super high end. They look real. Oh my god! Um, Good for you, Alex. Jeez. Uh, uh, like he says, yeah, we've got this uh, period two person boat. We've yeah. got we've got a battering ram. Like, uh, and they've said, yeah, we'll do all of this. There's no, there's no um, th- because it's for them. They're gonna have mm-hmm. the short film. They're gonna have the promo because I'm gonna shoot two things like you did, like you did really yeah. cleverly. Shoot it for one purpose, but also have this kind of double, like the double thing going on. So it's gonna uh-huh. be a short film. I don't know when it's gonna get made. It has to be in bad weather. It has to be overcast, and we get plenty, plenty of bad weather here. So it's you get be- plenty of rain over there. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, towards the end of this year, if we get shot this year, I'd be very happy. But I have yeah. to, like you did with this film, you have to trust everyone that's involved. Because there's no budget, but mm-hmm. the company and where it's being shot, they're redeveloping this huge piece of land that this this uh, uh, company own, and yeah. it's been turned into a period like the whole thing's period like like we're talking three hundred BC uh, three hundred BC something like I think uh, my dates are probably completely wrong, uh, but like we're talking over like almost two thousand years ago with how the uh-huh. land looks. So they're redeveloping the land to make it look like that. And oh my god! Yeah. So yeah. Um, so yeah, you got to take these opportunities, and you've really got to shoot your own stuff. And this is the first short that I've really been stoked about. I've got a friend of mine who's going to shoot it for me. I said the only rule is it's not handheld and yeah. it's shot in anamorphic. Yeah, There's, that's all I want from that. Out and these are my boards. These are the the, the little t- you know the little moments that I want to hit. These are the close ups. Mm-hmm. Um, everything else I'm super flexible with, and you know, again, I've got a good friend that's going to do sound. But I said to them, everyone has to be committed. I'm going to be a bit yeah. of a bit of a James Cameron tyrant about it because, in terms of 
this is how we are. But on set, mm. I'll be, I'll try and be jovial, but yeah. my energy's like, I'm like a, you know, like, you know, like uh, when you pull a car back and you let it go, it's one of those toys. Once yeah. we start shooting, if you're not fully committed, you're gone. You're just gone. It's a, it's a tough thing, but I want to say congrats to you, Alex. It looks like a crazy project you're on. and Yeah, it um, is crazy, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's very exciting, and it's very different, you know? So yeah. I'm excited for you. Congrats. Wait, wait if, you, if I showed you, I, I won't show you now, but the, um, the storyboards are very childlike. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do like you know, uh, my like, stick men for story of my life oh yeah, yeah when i when i draw hands especially it's it's the worst i, I look <laughs> it looks like it got mickey mouse gloves on you know yeah so, oh my god but yeah um i think you're uh i love the way the film's shot i really do um uh, minutes with mika i think it's really really nicely shot and the graded shots i'm glad you mentioned that because i was going to kind of mention it about the um uh, the thing because I because it's shot in log, it's shot in the flat profile because you know this is basically a lot of your shots are like like that, aren't they? You know, uh huh. Um, and that's the, the kind of look profile I put on, but yeah, mm -hmm. um, like the shots where uh, the you're talking about uh, babysitting and the child and the mother in the car, those graded shots that are finished are really nice, so the grade's really nice, it's looking really nice. Um, yeah, and like where the film goes, I, I really love it. And I love the little, is it like a little mini pumpkin she picks up at the vegetable store? It's, uh, no, I think it's an orange or it could be a pumpkin. You're right. Yeah, like they had, little, it, yeah. it was that time for that scene. Yeah. It was, uh, around October, I think November ish, maybe, um, of last year for that scene. So yeah, if, uh, it could have been pumpkins. I think you've done well with, um, okay. This is, this is the big question about the film I wanted to ask, um, especially, uh, in regards to it being three minutes and then extending it. Yeah. Where was your head at initially when you made the film? It was to make it a three minute film, right? Yes. Because um, the reason I ask that is, how did you kind of expand on it without really padding it out? Because it's, it's, it's really lean. It's, there's very little fat on the film. Um, so how did you kind of expand on that? And because it's really easy to bloat things out, add scenes in that are, are kind of just be throwaway deleted scenes almost. So how did you kind of reprocess or how did you kind of go about that? Yeah, no, that's a very good question, Alex. Uh, I appreciate you asking. Um, I think when you're on set, like you were saying just earlier, uh, when the car, when the car rolls, everybody's got to be rolling with it. Right. So the initial idea, I think, and I think this happens to me a lot, generally, I'll have a great idea and I want to pack it into three minutes. I want it to be bang, 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 bang. And we're out and the people are wondering like, oh shit, I want more or what the hell just happened. Let me see it again. Um, while it's a great concept at times, it does not work with every idea. So the three minutes that we had um, more or less was uh, what you've seen in the film. I'll tell you what we've added. We've added the picnic scene. Okay. Uh, and the dog scene. Yeah. If you they, really look at make... it, the rest of them are stretched out. They make complete sense, especially without spoilers. The picnic scene mm -hmm. adds real layers, and that's where I think the writing really worked, and it really worked because of the obsession of becoming a um, a personality online and with what he's trying to do that, mimic that. them yeah. with the phone and be like, ah, "Is it the right angle?" <laughs> but you had the I gotta give a lot of credit. Yeah, yeah, you had the, you had the little bit of comedy in there throughout, yes. but really. <laughs> Uh, in a really kind of um, it, you encapsulated it really well, especially with that scene that worked really, really well. And that will connect with so many people. Yeah. It's funny. I got to give a lot of credit to my director, Mike Bruno with the Maestro Media House. Um, I couldn't have done it without him. And uh, it's, it's just thinking, making me think of a story. You know, I was like, Mike, like I need to be sinister, like, you know, and I'm an actor in this process. So, I'm seeing things from a different light. And he's like, Manny, 
we need that CIBC Manny. Because I, I did a spot for CIBC and I'm very soft and nice. And I talk about, you know, how I got my house. And it was a, a nice little campaign I did for CIBC. And he's seen it and he laughed and he's like, what's going on here? Um, so it's funny that he would pull me back and be like, I thought I needed to be sinister as hell in this one. All throughout. I'm like, we're going to break away any of the many elements that we have. For some reason, I'm hell bent. And uh, he was like, no, for this to work. We need that gentle Manny at times, and then we need that transformation. So he's able to see it in a filmmaker way where, yeah, this, the script gradually goes That's great to the climax. That's great. Um, yeah. But it wasn't anything that we really written per se. Uh, the picnic scene was uh, a lot of ad lib. Okay. And it was it from Mike. It so with the way it was edited together and shot. It uh -huh. makes complete sense to do that way. And it, yeah, it absolutely worked. We absolutely worked. Yeah. The other thing I wanted to say real quick is that for the, uh, the mother daughter scene, we were challenged with the sun moving from left to right. You know, we have cars leaving. We're shooting in between COVID. We're making sure we're masked. We're properly, um, you know, uh, standing or, you know, or, or two meters apart and all that. So um, the, the, the work that we put in and the, the amount of patience that everybody had was just incredible. Um, but I think, yeah, you know, some of these challenges that you have when you're a filmmaker with the sun, with this, with that, with traffic, uh, it wasn't an easy movie to shoot. I'll be very honest. As easy yeah. as, uh, you know, I, I make it look, um, you know, we there was a there was a lot of patience and waiting around to get the right shot. Yeah, absolutely. Like, uh, it's really what it really, really is. The DP and the the directing and and getting the the minimal money. You know, in terms mm. of the calm persona, that really it really worked. It really, really worked. If you went for anything else, I think that shows a good director as well. And um, he's great. I, I really enjoyed a lot of how it shot and. Uh, the way I think it's the opening shot, the very first shot on the pullback. I think from it's the, from, the screen, from the screen. Yeah, yeah that was really good. That was really mm. really clever. And that's her producer what, Sam Tom set, so she gets all the credit for those. When, yeah, more power to her. Yeah, and it's when you do something like that and you do something clever. When it's obvious, it's like, oh, right, you're just doing something fancy. Oh, you're doing a gimbal shot now. You're doing this, that, and the other. That's why I'm not reticent about doing too much handheld because it is sometimes a little bit too easy. Not easy, but it's not my cup of tea sometimes. And I love tripod. Yes. And I love mixing up. There's got to be a reason. It's all about the language of film. And Correct. That's when exactly. You, when you do that pullback and I thought, all oh, right, okay. You established. It started character. getting much more better from yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. And I love the little thing with her and her um, partner or producer and all of that. And yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. that's uh, that's actually one of my good friends. Uh, shout out to um, Jack Hunter. Uh, he came at a nick of time's notice. Okay. Uh, here's here's a guy, Jack Hunter, who I think is great, great dude, uh, good actor as well. Um, but I haven't seen a lot of him, but we're just we're friends through mutual friends and things like that. And uh, you know, Jack was uh, another guy this year. The forty eight hour came up. And uh, he's a little bit like me. He likes to produce his own stuff and things like that. Very, uh, very great and a keen guy. For some reason, um, he didn't have anything this year. He called me up. He said, hey, Manny, do you need anybody? He's like, I'll be a tree. I'll be the telephone. I don't know, right? It's the juice said, you were talking okay, about. Okay, you know what? Yeah. Just I, I put him on standby. Again, you don't know what's going to cook up. Yeah. And uh, it came time that, you know what? We needed a scene for uh, Sarah you know, with her man, her boyfriend or somebody, we needed that interaction to break it up a little bit. So we didn't even move the lights. If you see in the shot, yeah, it, nothing it, it, is really moved. Jay, uh, Jack is inserted and we just pulled the camera back and we shot yeah, that it. That was good. That was um, really clever. Yeah. He, uh, yeah, I got to give kudos to him. He came in on time. Um, it's funny the way he came in he came in on his bicycle and he tripped while we're filming the scene, uh, the Amazon scene while I walked to the car Yeah, outside. So he was coming in and he tripped and uh, yeah, great guy. He's another actor who um, is ready for the opportunity 
And when you call him, he picks up and he delivers. He comes in. So this is the exact stuff that I need. I think everyone delivered. I really do. I, I everybody think, delivered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so happy with everybody's performances on yeah. camera and behind the scenes off I'm, camera as I'm well. I'm genuinely excited for you now. I really am. Uh, I say that to Michael and a few other people I've kind of gotten friends with because I I really do believe because when we, when I see any of these films, I'm not going to kind of pass judgment across all the films, but it's like, okay, um, I like original ideas. Uh, I really like... Uh, I'm open to experimental. We've had we're, we're going to do an experimental award this year because we've had a good number of them. We've had across the board. We've had some really interesting pieces, and uh, I like being surprised as well. And because <laughs> because of your your fun living nature and all of that, and and your I you know really enjoyed your last film. I thought it was it was was really fun and energy wise, and it was it was a really nice antidote to watch it. Um, yeah. And I I apologize to you and a lot of the other filmmakers for not showcasing all of the films. Oh no no you because, don't need to apologize, uh, Alex. It's uh, all because good. it's a missed opportunity to pass your energy on. Now, in in some way, I'm definitely going to showcase that film as well. But this is, yeah, I really do believe I've got. I'm going to pass pass my good karma on to you. Uh, and Received. I really I really believe yeah I really believe it's going to be it's going to be a good step for you. And it, from a filmmaking point of view, from an a- acting point of view, even for the, the DP, the director, pro, you know, the production, it's a really solid short film. It really, really is because yeah. it, it, it'll connect with so many people. Um, I think online festivals, especially uh, with the obsession with filmmaking and, and Instagram and, filters and all of that and you portray her really well she's not an idiot in any way or anything like that you know her performance is really subtle really really she strikes a real balance for online uh-huh. person, online personality so yeah i i only see positive things coming out of this i really really do yeah no thank you and i know you guys have a like a big job and uh it's certainly you know, not a given that even, you know, you can showcase every film at times just because there's just a lot of entries and there's a lot of good stuff. Yeah. And it's not like everybody can also come on your podcast. So I'm very grateful for that. Alex. Yeah, we, and, we, uh, we've minimized it to 15 people. And um, I know, you know what? I think it's when you said 15, I said, man, I got to get my shot in there. Yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah. that little, little fuel up inside uh, it, me and it was like okay I, was like, I gotta yeah. shoot I gotta get in there I was like yeah I'd love to speak to money again because you you're a really good dude and I know if we if we lived in the same sea we'd be really good friends I know that yeah and we, and we no, are even though, even though we've got these thousands of miles we are absolute friends and <laughs> it was yeah. the film that it was the film that it wasn't like oh money's done something proper it wasn't that it was wow you created something really really good and it's really nice to see the narrative, the writing, especially the writing, especially. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. You, you really smashed it out of the park, man. You really, really did. Well, thank you, Alex. I really appreciate your words of encouragement. It just, um, it fuels me to do better, to be very honest, these words that you tell me. I, I just want positive things for you. And I'm the same with, uh, likewise with a lot of other people, but yeah, really, really great. Uh, anyway, this is where we come back. There's going to be a jump cut. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's um, uh, yeah. I, I really love the the little poster you created as well. I really kind of little homage the little the two lines and you saw what the I did. The two with lines. That. See, I uh, I saw your two lines, and I was gonna do them straight, but then because of the title, it's broken. I said, let's break those two as well. I thought that that's the reason. It's just gotta go in the gimmick. This. Yeah, yeah. And we've we've it's really nice to see that people create the artwork for their films as well, especially on film freeway. Cause you've got super high end films. You've got, um, people that are, uh, there's a chap that from, um, East India, his film exit through the window was to help him. Cause his dad was seriously ill with COVID and it was, mm. uh, it was a, um, uh, it was a, a way for him to try to recover and distract himself. And it was, it was shots out into a, a small Indian town, seeing what people are doing. And it's more yeah. of a experimental piece. 
but we got such a kind of range of experimental films. We we're definitely doing an award for that. Um, and I'm excited to tune in that day. Cause I feel like you guys bring a lot of variety and it's yeah. a worldwide open, thing. We're open to really it. Like, like, yeah, I, I was really open. Like um, we've got a film called a ghost story and it was a, a 20 year old uh, filmmaker from um, Argentina. And we've never had anyone from Argentina, which has been amazing. You know, I spoke yeah. to her a few days ago, her episodes out now, her interviews out. Um, okay. but yeah. It's, um, yeah, it's really fantastic. We've got um, uh, another filmmaker tomorrow. She's from the UK. And yeah, yeah I love I, I love the kind of diversity and the kind of the backgrounds of everyone and the reasoning behind it and being able to speak to this chap from India uh, the other day. And mm. it's really it's really kind of humbling the reasoning for doing the festival as well because we just initially did it, create it, Chris and I, for just yeah. for us. And I, I think I mentioned that to almost every filmmaker last year. But it's yeah. really, this year especially, it's kind of taken more on because people are still in difficult places, you know, trying to claw claw back into some sort of semblance of normality. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm really happy to do it second year. Um, depending on next year, it'll be with the way the brand is. I'm not sure whether I'll do a third year simply because hopefully yeah. there won't be a reason to do a film about isolation or around it, you know, or so, yeah, it's a, it's a tricky one that I'm still going to do the hellbound horror mm. festival. Cause I love horror. You see, I uh, want to be, <laughs> I want you to, gotta... I want you to submit your film. I want to, I want you to submit it to hellbound okay. because it's, it's, I have a, I have a horror one, but it's a feature. Uh, well, I'm happy to we're, help. We're, you we're working on a horror. It, yeah. That's I, uh, I can't even talk about it that much, but yeah, it is gory. Let's say that. Love it. Uh, Love it. It's a feature, and uh, it's called Snowblind. It's oh. directed by Brian Locke here. Um, great, great title. And it stars great my title. great friend Michael Mazurkovich. So, I'm very excited for that. Yeah, if you ever, uh, if you guys have, uh, you know, feature film sort of things, uh, you well, know, um, I, I'm in. I'm, I'm in. I'm in every category. If, you really if you've got it. if you've got pre-production or anything like that, shots or storyboards, I'm happy to help promote that at the very least in the festival, the live event. So send any material yeah. over and we're doing that for Let's see what um, we have. We have a trailer. We oh amazing. Trailer, yeah. So. Yeah, send that over with a little Manny intro. And then we'll yeah. we'll we'll put that in the live event at the very least. because uh, I'm I'm That's happy really to support great. filmmakers from all sorts, you know, like um We've got Henry Tran, who's done a... He shot a music video on his PlayStation 3. I don't know how he did it. With on a, the with a camera. Yeah, I don't know how he did it with a camera wow. plugged in. But he's a, yeah. trump, he's a trumpet player, and it's all like in silhouette with like dotted colors and his little daughters in it as well. And he's a mental health advocate, and he's got billboards in Toronto, uh, him and Nightingale, um, and... Yeah, he's he's a really good dude, and he he produced this short film. His little office is a closet in his house because his little daughter is like terrorizing the house, you know. So he's got this yeah. tiny little closet. It's like half the size of this, or less than that. Uh -huh. And I, I just loved his energy, like yours. And I said to him, "Oh, I've got an idea, a script idea for a promo for Hellbound. Would you help me with it?" And yeah. he he smashed it. He re he really really great. But this year he's done this campaign about mental health and you know, mm. people's mental health is down the toilet, you know, for sure. So the repercussions yeah, yeah. Awesome. of having a lockdown for a year or so or two years mm. is um, people's, you know, losing so many jobs and, and family members dying and all of that. It's, it's got a huge impact on people's, you know, uh, headspace. And Henry did this yes. campaign and I said to Henry, I'd love to do in some way, help you promote, uh, what you're doing outside of uh, filmmaking so he wrote he wrote this thing he was really jazzed about it. he wrote this uh, script about mental health and he does this um uh kind of rap and song and i'm like it was like holy sh my missus watched it and she was like oh my god you got something special there in terms mm. of the, the the message so yeah. we're gonna we're gonna cut shots of the films shots of this interview and other people's interviews together as uh -huh. part of the the video, so we're going to produce a, a, a music, almost a music video to his monologue to camera. Um, yeah, 
But yeah, I can't wait to show that. Um, can't wait to show that. Oh, that's a nice and different project. Yeah. yeah, he and it was really nice. It's like I wrote this little thing for Hellbound. He's written this for me, and we're mm-hmm. producing stuff together, and we're not even in the same uh, continent, you know. So it's it's been really good fun. And I'm yeah. looking. I'm looking to do that with a couple of uh, filmmakers because I'm gonna when I can come to Canada and not have to be in lockdown. I'm gonna make some things with a few a few actors and filmmakers as well. Um, and I've come up with this um, dating short film, and I love to shoot it in Canada. And uh, I've, it's a really simple idea set in the time of COVID. It doesn't have to be shot then, but it's a really really simple idea, and I, I can't wait to yeah. do that. But yeah, it's um, yeah, it's a pleasure to keep that idea uh, with you. Yeah, if you need my help, oh no, yeah, uh, man. let we'll me be, know. We'll, or if we'll you're in Toronto. Out. We'll be on a few uh, beers, man. You let yeah. me know because I'll show you the spots. Yeah, absolutely. We'll yeah. have a few drinks and stuff. And I, home, man, you yeah. know what? It's funny. I was listening to the podcast and I was saying like, oh yeah, you know, when things get better, I want to come to the UK. Um, that still holds. I still want to come down, you know? Yeah, I'm, there's, I'm a, there's a, there's a um, brand new downstairs bathroom and, and uh, a room it's all, <laughs> all made up. It's got my, it's got my merchandise that I collected for like X amount of years and my 500 poster film collection poster in there. So once I clear that crap out and sell most of that, um, uh, I'll let, yeah, you can, you let you, me know. Yeah. I have a spot for you too. Um, in my house and, uh, Awesome, man. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's, I'm really liking, you know, I'm digging the vibe that, uh, you know, we're helping each other. It's funny, you know, we haven't met each other and we met last year on this podcast. Yeah. And um, the thing you do, Alex, I don't, uh, you know, maybe people, uh, again, it's something that, we, you know, we don't even stop and thank the people that do these incredible things, you know, like it was just my mother's day and it's, I don't even tell her I love you and things like that, you know, on a daily basis. And I should more. Um, but what you guys are doing is, um, you guys are building a platform for us to showcase, uh, in a time where not many people are doing that, you know, so hats off and kudos to you guys for doing this for us, you know? Yeah. And it's been, um, it's been this year, especially with work ramping up outside the house, it's yeah. been a lot more difficult to put content out, but I'm using a, a, a website, um, a service called later.com. So I'm producing a lot of marketing materials and then scheduling it. And then it gets released on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, um, uh-huh. and then live comments. I always kind of add real comments as well. So, um, so yeah, it's, um, it's, I want to ask you one last little thing. How's well, um, yes. home life and how's everything been since I last spoke to you? Um, last you spoke with me, well, I was laid off. So, uh, I was still just in my house. I was enjoying my new home, uh, going for nature walks, um, collecting the government money, you know, the, the money that they give you to survive. So, uh, I think at that time, like I've, I've never really been off to be very honest. I think I work, I work and I work through and that's all I know. And that's, it's just something I do. Um, So for me to get six months off without any restriction, without any sort of things, um, I used it, yeah, to work. I used it, I should have worked out a little bit more, but um, I did sort of go for walks. I did get my head in a right space. Um, I did get positive with the money that I did have, I did try to, um, you know, help and uh, keep things moving, let's say that. Um, And uh, I was back with my agency full time. Um, I was out being submitted for roles and stuff like that. And I felt that I was starting to catch something. I was catching fire. Uh, You know, every maybe second or third audition that I did, I nailed. And then work called, work called. And I was like, oh man, why are you calling me, please? <laughs> why? I'm like, just let me collect this government money and let me make more in the process. Yeah, um, it's so difficult. But for though. sure enough, right? Uh, they called me. Um, I wrapped up my commitments and uh, I've been really grateful. You know, I know some people are like, oh, you're at work, this, that. I've got a very wonderful job. I've got a wonderful team. I work from home. It's not stressful. Um, 
it's 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 been blessed to be very honest uh you know going to work i feel like i'm doing something but i'm always in my room so it feels like this extended never ending vacation in my room which my room is amazing i've got a balcony i see what's going on the amazon guy delivery guys coming by left and right um i i see the people taking walks i miss that um i have the leisure to step out on my balcony get the fresh air it's just i feel like uh, everybody's in the same situation we have to stay strong i think uh, mentally it wasn't easy for me the other way around when i got back to work that's when it was mentally tough for me cuz i'm like man you know i'm 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 here i'm working everything's fine um and that's when the creative outlets come out and i'm like you know yeah i should get back and i should shoot more of my stuff um and that's what i do so you know 9 to 5 i work uh very easily and then the rest is just family life for me i spend that's time great, with the man. family we watch tv you know i'll go for walks to be very honest there's not much to do <laughs> so you know you wait for the new netflix film that's going to come out on thursday um you maybe you play cards you play monopoly uh you know i've been trying a whole bunch of different foods i never really ate that much indian food i don't know if we said that in the first podcast now all of a sudden i'm so bored i'm ordering <laughs> indian food i'm ordering it and i'm like what's going on with me so yeah it's a, it's a thing it's you know it's trying different foods you're just trying whatever you're doing though whatever you're creating just really happens in your space inside your house absolutely um or your backyard or whatever you know in your neighborhoods and stuff and it's i think i've always been at peace i'm very happy you know to be alone um in a, in a sense that you know like i feel spending time with my own self is good that's what i mean by that it's like you know you get to regroup you rethink you think um you take walks alone you clear your head uh you discover yourself you discover things about yourself you learn new things um and again it's you know it's it's in those walks where you think about life you think about stuff you think about where you are every year on my birthday i look at like hey did i move up from last year you know did i learn anything am i a better person my birthday is a real good date to check for me on that so yeah it was a real different check for me on this birthday where it was like did i accomplish what i wanted to no cuz like you know covid hit everything got hit off track but did i hustle did i try did i try to make myself better and all those things were yes so that's what uh, that's what keeps me going and that's what i feel like you know that uh, keeps fueling me to do better so these days just to wrap it up yeah i work i work 9 to 5 monday to friday every day feels like the same um you know some of my customers are upset at me that i don't really remember them but i have a lot of clients but they remember they remember me which is the good thing so they know that they're getting good service when you know um i deal with them so that's all awesome. other than that i remember saying that i was going to renovate uh renovations are a little bit in a halt uh we are in a lockdown as much as i want to shoot and i want to get things moving it's uh the situation in the world that sort of at a standstill mm-hmm. you know uh we're renovating my kitchen uh and then there's you know we're also doing the flooring and i cannot go in the stores to check the different options that are available so those things are making it a little bit tough this is not something that i could order off amazon or anything right so now you really need to feel that with your feet you need to see that properly yeah correct yeah so some of these things like let's say renovation purposes it's slow even in my industry i do after market car parts you want to get a car part for your mustang you got to wait uh you're looking to lease a tesla which is something we were looking at uh you know we i was looking uh, at a tesla before the before covid i could have easily snatched one off the the floor like a demo you know sort of car and things like that and nothing like that now now everything's back ordered you have to wait because production is uh you know pretty rampant um everything is just sort of the demand went up right so yeah. like you know getting a tesla nowadays it takes 2 years Yeah and when uh, when ships get stuck in the Suez canal that never that never That's another one. A lot <laughs> of the was, stuff people was... don't realize. 
<laughs> it comes from across the river. It's and so, if it it's doesn't so nuts, come, yeah. <laughs> I cannot sell it. Uh, so yeah, some of the stuff, you know, Canada, US, we're all guilty. Uh, a lot of the stuff comes, yeah, from China and things like that. And I cannot say everything, but there'll be, you know, the one part that's missing and it comes from China. It's not yeah, there. Um, I watched so, a thing on, online uh, today about Ford stockpiling brand new cars uh-huh. on this raceway, this NASCAR raceway. And you can see the racetrack and how many cars from space now because they don't have this particular chip for all the vehicles. Yeah. So it's like play it looks like Sony are redoing their PlayStation because they've got a couple of components that can't be manufactured or the rate of manufacture is ridiculously slow. So they're actually yeah. changing the changing their console to get more out. Um it, and this it's it's really horrible to think about the knock on effect in the long term. Like mm. um I'll tell you something that's a little bit more not somber but sad. My uh, yep. future father-in-law had a heart attack on uh, Monday, and um, Sorry to hear. He, he, uh, oh, cheers. He um, he he's in a really good hospital, literally thirty a minute down the road. It's really really close. The hospital. It's where I was born. It was where I survived COVID in December. Um. Yeah, and uh, he needs to go to see a heart specialist in Liverpool called Broad Green, and they're the they're some of the best uh, specialists in the country. Um, mm. But he has to wait in hospital a week before he can go there because. Yeah. And I thought, yeah, I had this theory. Yeah, the backlog of surgeries worldwide, especially when you're Medicare or whatever the support system is. And the, obviously NHS, you know, we, you pay with your taxes for it, but you still have you have to wait, uh, you know, quite a few months. But the backlog of surgeries is going to be crazy. And a whole thing yeah. came out on BBC today about the backlog of surgeries. And uh, the local hospital here had one case of COVID last week, one in the hospital. When I was there, oh. every single ward had COVID patients in. Yeah. the Because the vaccine rollout here has been with, touch wood we've been quite you know i know canada's not you know it's suffering and you know uh the eu block because we left the eu um it's suffering as well because there's so many people in india suffering and there's so many millions of people but i feel i feel very lucky because i've i've managed to have my vaccines because people were not going to get their vaccine which is crazy so yeah um vin he's um he has to wait a week just to get the scans to check his heart mm. properly. Uh, so it's the kind of ramping up, you know. So I don't know what my point was, but yeah, it's um, it's it's crazy what's happened over the last last year. And I'm really happy that you've kind of you've got this positivity, man. It's not, and it's not this protective shell. You're carving out like a positive life for yourself in you know, the a horrible, horrible year that everyone wants to forget. And yeah, it's, um, I think your energy is infectious and it's really, really good outlook to have, man. And yeah, we've, we've just had, (laughs) we've had our flaws done and it's a pain in the ass. So yeah, you'll, you'll get, you'll get that sorted. Cause I I will. Yeah. Our flooring came from a, um, a nun's convent and I was gifted it um, because it's parquet flooring. I was gifted it. Uh, because I did a lot of work for these nuns years ago. <laughs> and uh, okay. It's so random. And the floor came from their dining area. It was 50 square meters. Yeah. And it's it's teak from the 20s. And the only people to ever walk on this floor are 12 nuns. Obviously, there's been nuns that have died and passed away. And there's only ever been a number of 12 nuns that have walked on it yeah. bare, barefooted. So uh-huh. the, the, the floor got fitted in 1922 in this convent and i you know so many decades later uh they said oh would you like anything from the thing because we have to move to nottingham i still support them in nottingham i drive down there i said yeah, yeah. i just po- i just pointed to the floor i want i want the floor <laughs> and then we got this company to to fit it and their fitter who's great and the way they do it is amazing you know the herringbone and all that uh, uh-huh. and his the fitter who was exceptional we got a great company uh, his mom passed away during the fitting, and it was. I I said, I'll wait. Will Vicky and I will wait for 
if he wants to come back and work on the house, will wait mm-hmm. as long as he needs because he's his standard was super, super high. And, you know, mm-hmm. like you're saying, we wouldn't have, if we were looking at floorboards or carpets, there's no way you can pick any of that without seeing it in store. No way. No, you can't do these things online. I think yeah. I've been the same guy, even shopping for clothes. You know, like an XL and H&M is a different XL for me at another store. Yeah, That's just, uh, you're sort of gambling when you do that, right? So some things, yeah, you just cannot order online. Yeah, there's a, there's, uh, a, there's, a whole, there's a whole ritual to it as well. You know, when you go and try clothes on or go to these stores, I, I really kind of like, you know, furniture is a big thing because I've got lower back problems. And if yes. you don't try furniture out, there's no other Correct. way of doing it. Uh, the one thing that's opening up, there's a lot of things that are opening up on Monday in the UK. And the uh-huh. biggest thing for me, it's, well, it's a small thing. It's only entertainment. Is cinemas are opening. Nice. Okay. So you got social, that. Social distanced and all that. And yeah. I've wait, I didn't want to spend money on um, uh, uh, Godzilla versus Kong because I was like, right. This deserves to be seen in the cinema because I'm a big fan of all those monster movies. Yeah, no, and, no. And that one needs to be there. Yeah. In yeah. cinemas. For sure. So yeah, I feel, I feel I'm going to go there. It's like my Mecca really, you know, going to the cinema is almost the closest thing I have to a religion. Um, uh-huh. <laughs> I, honestly, it really, really is, you know, and it's I, don't true. Know, I don't discount anyone's beliefs and I have a lot of positive energy from uh, uh, Vicky's dad's beliefs and all of that. But when I go to the cinema, I, I like I kind of like um, sticky floors and the smell of popcorn and all of that. Yep. You know. <laughs> but yeah, I could go on a whole rant about, you know, like soulless cinemas that have got 20 screens and they're they're not my cup of tea. I I like ideally I'd go to a cinema that's in the eighties. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Really speckled carpet. The carpet in this room is blue with speckles in it. Because uh-huh see it a little bit this dark carpet here and it yes because it reminds me of when i used to go to the cinema in the night in the early 90s that's the uh-huh. reason i picked this carpet <laughs> so yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to that i think i'm gonna do like a double bill of mortal Kombat or something as well so uh, oh okay i uh yeah. i saw mortal Kombat was it, was uh it? on my ip tv and it was good oh god uh i enjoyed it but uh yeah no i think Canada, we're, we're, we're behind on a lot of that. Um, I think we'll be very lucky if, uh, you know, a good portion of us will be vaccinated by the end of the month. Let's see how it goes. I got my shot happening this weekend and then the other one in August. Awesome. So awesome. I'm thinking for the most part, people ask me, they're like, oh man, I hope, you know, at the beginning of the year, they're like, Manny, I hope, you know, things open up. Let's be real with, you know, with what's going on. At least I can just speak for Ontario, Canada. The, the rate that it's going at, like, I don't want to lie to my friends or anybody. Um, I'm thinking 2021 is gone for sure. I'm thinking by 2022, given that the citizens act accordingly they're safe i still think maybe summer 2022 looks like a good goal yeah um and that's just me being realistic you know because we don't know like the variants could creep up all of a sudden yeah nobody's talking about those uh and i don't know what you know what the vaccines are to combat the variants apparently you know they seem you know, a little bit different and stronger. There's, there's and stuff, one so. that's uh, been talked about to tackle the Indian variant here. Yes, uh, so yeah, the there's, Indian variant. There's, there's strat- strategies for that. And um, I, yeah, it's it's difficult. You know, there's, there's, a, there's definitely a stigma attached to giving a variant a, na- a country's name almost. So yeah. you know, the Brazilian variant, the UK variant, I think yes. there's, I think there's a, there's definitely a different way they should have said this. You could say this is where it is it first identified as something, but yeah, I'm a but little not bit call it that. Yeah, I'm a little bit mm, about that because then there's stigma attached to it, and you know, like people need to understand there's billions of, I don't know, it's over a billion people are in India. You mm-hmm. Just you're attaching a stigma to 
a name and I, I think that's a little unfair you know because there's the UK one there's a Brazilian there's Indian and yeah I'm not a big fan of, of how they, they brand it you know what I mean it's uh, it's funny uh, here in Canada in Montreal it's called uh, Le Journal de Montréal they published something on their front page with the Trudeau for uh, from Trudeau from his trip to India so sure, he's got up the Indian, you know, get up and he's got like a, what, what do you call it? Uh, a bandana. <laughs> um, he has a bandana. He has a Sherwani and stuff, full Indian gear. And yeah, they're saying, you know, the uh, the Indian, uh, you know, COVID-19 has arrived. And it's the way, I guess, they somehow worded it and presented it. I feel, to be honest, I'm a very good human being. I don't feel anything, but I feel that my peers... Uh, were offended that they are targeting the country uh, very hard and saying that, you know, hey, it's coming from there. I I, I really don't know what to say, you know, like it's, uh, I don't think they should call it, yeah, like you're saying, it shouldn't be the UK or the this, the that. Yeah. It should be that, you know what, yeah, make a mention that this comes from this country so people are, are aware. Um, but in this world, it's still the, you know, everybody is uh, everybody for themselves if you really look at it you yeah. know what i mean they have some restrictions but nothing really stops you from contracting it there's no real laws oh, to no. help you you know if, if somebody dies nobody's it's really borderless. there to help your family it's or anything borderless it really is borderless and in india just to take a little minute i feel like you know the, the government has a lot of money to wipe all this out they can send cylinders They've got a loads of stacks of money, but they're doing zero with it, right? So yeah, that tells you the character of the people running the show is that, you know, when you're spending so much money on a statue and one, maybe one thirtieth of it is needed to help out, you know, another city and stuff and they don't do it. Well, yeah. I don't know what it, what it says, you know, like it's, these are, you know, these are the people that are getting elected. You know, these are the people that are being chosen, but I don't think it's the people's fault. They're just presented with five devils and you got to choose one of them. Yeah. So, so that's a really eloquent way of putting it. And that's what that chap from uh, um, East India was saying, saying exactly mm -hmm. the same thing that you said. The word that I'm getting from, from my family is that people uh, are dropping like flies, you know? Yeah. It's like, yeah, the family was there and all of a sudden, you know, across the street, the family isn't there in two weeks. Uh, sad situation. I don't know how to put this like uh, in a, in another way. I do want to say that I don't know whose fault it is, but I also felt that in India, a lot of people did not take COVID that seriously either. You know, like, I don't know if it's an individual thing. I don't know if it's, they didn't advertise it, that it's as deadly, but I think, you know, they, they carried on business as usual and that had a lot of effect. And we're seeing that effect right now. We're seeing people falling. Um, but the other thing is, I think the media only shows you what you want to see. So we have to be so careful true. of that. Um, you know, talking to people or family from the inside, I get, you know, I guess a better picture of what is happening. But what we see on the news is for sure very much more grave than, you know, than, than how it is. But I won't lie, the situations in India are not any great. So the news really reflects what's going on there. Yeah. You, you, to the flip side of this, yeah. like there, you know, India is actually very open. They're revealing their numbers. I don't know what's going on in China. Yeah. No, one if does, you really yeah. start looking at it from that point of view, you're like, okay, this is what we know from one country, but in that country where they didn't tell us anything, what's going on. Yeah. It makes you think, right. It's, it uh, makes me not, not want to visit you know with like the uh there's a whole political thing about internment camps that they've got in the middle of deserts and all sorts so yeah there's uh there's a lot about china that's amazing the culture is amazing a lot a lot of the people are amazing but then yeah. there's um they're probably listening to us now uh but yeah <laughs> it's uh it's there's a lot of um how do i sum it up a lot that i don't like as well and it's not it's not the it's not the people it's it's no it's uh, yeah hours, you know it's um it's, it's crazy and yeah it's uh really kind of refreshing for a country like india to reveal those numbers and 
Like it's grim reading. It's really, really is. And like you say, you know, you're you only know you only know what's being put out by your own government and by what's being put out by the media. So you know how yeah. much can you, how much can you really trust? Um, but Manny, thank you so much for being on the show. And one one very last uh, swift question. Yes, um, go ahead. What, what have you got anything to recommend from uh, streaming services or Netflix or anything like that? Anything you'd recommend? Ooh, um, I don't really know what I'm waiting for, to be honest. I think I'm on my sister's Netflix and she has a lot of chick flicks and rom coms <laughs> and stuff that pop up. So, um, uh, that's a good one. Because I am a wrestling fan, I'm waiting. Uh, well, the Young Rock uh, has. Yeah, I've heard about that. Yeah, for the first full season, uh, you know, they film it. They, they finished filming it, so that's recorded um, on my TV, which I'm going to start attacking. I randomly started watching Batwoman. I don't know why. I think I was a big fan of uh, Gotham, yeah. and the last few episodes I was not able to see. I don't know why. I saw only until episode 12 and then maybe I didn't do my research. I did not see the other episodes pop up. Right, I, see. I don't know if I've got to subscribe to something or some channel to see those, but now it's yeah, been a so. while that I'm like, ah, forget it. So I started watching Batwoman. Um, there's something shot in Toronto, Kim's Convenience. It was the last I season. Uh, I love it. I've been to the, I've seen the shoots happen outside. I know exactly uh, on which corner they're shooting. Um, so that, uh, I've been catching up a little bit on that. Uh, the guy, Simi Liu, he's, um, he's going to be in uh, Shang-Chi and Marvel. That looks dope. Uh, Tony Lung is the reason, so- Tony Lung's the uh, reason I'm watching that film. He, <laughs> okay. my, my early, uh, we could, we could go on for hours about this, but my early, um, exposure to Asian cinema um, mm-hmm. was Chow Young Fat, Tony Long. Oh, Chow Young Fat. Yeah, I know that. Uh, Tony Long and John Woo. You know, those early, early John stuff Wu, yeah. um, like The Killer, which has got Tony Long and um, Chow Young Fat in. And uh-huh. uh, yeah, I want, I, I want him to, if he kicks ass in that film, like in Hero, he does, because mm-hmm. uh, he's the, you know, the romantic kind of relationship in Hero. Uh, yeah. uh, the um, uh, the Zhang Yimou film, uh, it yeah, can't wait. I'm like, when I saw his casting, and I was like, yes, give me that now. I need that. <laughs> so that's that's the most excited. Apart from going back to Doctor Strange. Now I didn't like Doctor Strange straight away, but he's. I think it's my favorite now because mm. what Marvel have done with Hulk, which has always been my favorite Marvel character. Because of the whole universal deal, they don't yeah. show him enough. They re- I think there's some sort of screen time thing. You know, like in the last end, end game where he's like yes. buried under the building bullshit and he just appears mm-hmm. at the end. I, I'm really kind of annoyed by that. Um, so yeah, um, Doctor Strange is my favorite, but this new film, uh, is it The Ten Rings? That's the, that's the kind of subtitle for it. Power the- mm. That looks so cool. Um, and I want on a on a on a different note. I want um, I know he's not in it, but I want Henry Golding to be the next James Bond. That's what I want. I think. Oh, I just is, remembered a small a thing that me, we were yeah. chatting about in our last podcast. We were talking about uh, 007 coming out in November. I remember <laughs> saying that that movie never came out. <laughs> no, it'll be this year. It'll be this year because I'm hoping, too, I'm hoping there's too much money. There's way too much. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's like that's like what I tell my eight, friends. Nine, They're like, million. Oh, you know, 007 was supposed to come out. I'm like, Whoa, 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 007 is a big film. Look what Godzilla there's big did. promotions behind it. Yeah. They're not just gonna roll it out like that. Yeah, Godzilla really did, really, really did well. It um, did, despite, yeah. And then Bond, Bond's my cup of tea. I, I love, I think Daniel, Daniel Craig's from Chester, he's from this city. Yes. Um, so he, yeah, I can't wait. Bond's gonna be rocking. I can't wait to get really bad hot dogs in the cinema and popcorn and, <laughs> and, and the nachos and all that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Give me all that. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Um, but yeah. My personal recommendation. Uh, I love uh, <laughs> this is ties into your film. I love yeah. anything with serial killers in and I have, a, oh. do you know, I love, I love, I love classics. I love horror. 
I love yes. all sorts of stuff, but um, uh, I think it's called Night Stalker on Netflix. Oh my god, I've seen it. Have you seen it? it yeah, yeah, amazing, amazing. You've se- you've seen it? You've seen yeah, all the episodes? I've seen or? all of them. Like, how many people did he kill? <laughs> I loved Crazy. it. Um, so well produced. All I've heard it? is uh, yeah. bad things about it. So I'm happy that you say good things oh, about no, it. I, it's amazing. Have you seen it? I've seen it. Yeah. I, I I think is like Netflix apart from the Cecil Hotel uh, show, which was all I saw that too. I, I really hey, I really hated that. We're the we're the same type of guys because yeah, Cecil Hotel. So I thought because it was all right. I loved it. The problem with it um, is they repeated the same th- episode. Every episode's the same, like obsession with the water tank. I know where, that's where everything happened, uh-huh. but it was it was. Well, it, one episode would have covered the whole thing. The, yeah, it was really stretched out. Um, I didn't mind it because I have nothing else like to watch, or <laughs> nothing really is interesting going on. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I'll watch. You know, I'll watch maybe eight episodes. Cecil. But the way they marketed uh, nights, that, the way they marketed huh? the Cecil Hotel, the way they put the trailer together, mm-hmm. they talked about um, of spoilers if you don't know the serial killer is in night in Night Stalker, but the yeah. fact that those people stayed he stayed at that hotel they allude to it a tiny bit and then they've got this one really short story that is stretched out that was the issue i had it's the first time i'd been mismarketed at by netflix i think when it came to documentaries because their Uh documentary output is like making a murderer is the best thing i think they've put out in terms of documentary and i I i i honestly believe Stephen avery's innocent because you know you see mm. so many reports online about serial killers eventually when they're incarcerated they go to prison they always end up admitting it um but yeah I, if he's innocent it's a true you know anyone that's gone to prison or put to death and they've they're innocent it's a it's truly an evil act itself you know um so yeah um yeah, I, I love I love that show. I love um, uh, Night Stalker. I think it's it's so well put together. I love it. I thought it was amazing. Um, you know what? Yeah, you know when things like Night Stalker come up, I'm always looking for more like this. You know that yeah. feature on Netflix, like yeah, more of these ones. Yeah. Um, Spiral is something that I'm waiting on. It's coming out tomorrow. Oh, Spiral like Book the, Yeah, I like the so look of that, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm 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 that type of guy. I'm waiting for that one, to be honest. Uh, that along with Bond to come out. So um, oh, let's see when that one comes out. Spiral should be should be pretty good. I'm excited. I think those movies. I mean, the the some of the Saw movies they're they're shot in Toronto. Um, just a big fan for it. I'm a big fan for all these slashers. Sometimes cheesy slashers, but uh, who's um, your who's your money on? Who do you want? And who's your? This is the very last question before we go. Yeah. Who's your money on, but and who do you want to play the next Bond? Ooh, that's such a tough one. Obviously, uh, you, obviously, you want to play Bond. <laughs> I'd want to play Bond, yeah. Um, but as well, I'm not too greedy. I'd probably play the villain in Bond because I want to switch yeah. my trajectory, yeah, yeah, in my yeah. acting career. So, um, God, there's so many talented guys, man. This is such a crazy question. Wasn't uh, I want to ask you? Wasn't Killian Murphy at some point name dropped for Bond? Uh, yeah, but I don't think he's got the. But he wasn't high up in the list. He was one where I thought, okay, maybe. Um... He auditioned for Batman as well. You know, the I saw clips of him and Christian Bale's the Christian Bale Batman. He auditioned in suit, in costume, with lighting. Oh, okay. For, for uh, Batman, um, oh, I, man, I, I think they did amazing yeah. with Bale, though. Oh yeah. I yeah. don't know about Murphy. I always see Murphy as uh yeah, as the bad guy, maybe a little bit more sinister and things like that. I'll tell Great you my two. Actor. I'll tell you my two. I want Henry Golding to be Bond because I see I saw Henry Crazy Man. Rich R- R- Crazy Rich Asians and I was really mm. I had a, I was really sourced, you know. We the myself, Vicky and her sister were all kind of had a few drinks. Thought, oh, let's watch something ridiculous, Crazy Rich Asians. And yeah. I love, I really loved it. I love so much about the film, and mm-hmm. Henry Golding. I I loved him in uh, Guy Ritchie's The Gentleman as well. Um, so for me, that's who I'd want to play Bond. And it's got nothing to do with diversity. It's got to do with 
the actor, the personality, mm-hmm. the, the phrase. For sure. He's got to bring the swag in it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's for me, whenever you get casting or it's all about who's the right fit, who's the, got the right energy, you know? And yes. I think, and it, I, I really want this, you know, I, I want Henry Cavill to have it. I was just going to say, you know what? For some odd reason. Impossible, because the Mission Impossible, he smashed it. He did a great job with um, Tom Cruise. Um, so, yeah. There's a new Mission Impossible coming out, yeah? I was two. They shot them back to back. Oh, or they least, did? Oh, or my at least God. they planned to. And they've, they've hey. shot a lot of in the UK. And I've got um, a lot of time in terms of his filmmaking. I've got a lot of time for Tom Cruise. I think he's an absolute genius. His work ethic is second to none. His, yeah, uh, I'm a huge Mission Impossible fan, especially Chris McQuarrie's films. He's a brilliant director, exceptional writer. So the Mm. last two that he's done, uh, Fallout and Rogue Nation. um, Yeah, I can't wait. So, sorry, mate, who, who would you... Yeah, no, I was thinking, um, I know Henry Cavill, he's, uh, he did Superman, but if he can, I don't even mind him doing both. Um, I think he would be, um, the guy to play Bond. That would be one of my, one of my, you know, best picks, Henry. Yeah, he's great. And he's such a dude. He's such a dude. Like, you know, talk, he's, he's a mega geek as well, like with his gaming and his, he knows everything about, what's that show he did on Netflix? Um, the big sci-fi fantasy thing, uh, what the hell's it? Witcher. He knows everything about The Witcher because he's played all the games. He's actually played all the games. He's not one of these, oh yeah, I was always a big, you know, like these comic book actors that say, oh yeah, I was oh. always a fan of the comic books. And you know that's bollocks most of the time. You yeah. know bullshit, so... Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've got a lot of time for Henry Cavill. I really, his outlook on life and what he believes in, and that, and he's not super political in any way, which way. And I don't mm-hmm. like being project, you know, I don't like being told what to do uh, in terms of uh, politics, but he's got a, he's super positive. As Sherlock Holmes in Enola Holmes, which I didn't really like too much, he was excellent as oh. Sherlock Holmes. So, yeah, I, I, I'd like to watch him in everything. <laughs> he's <laughs> but, solid, man. I heard um, Idris Idris Elba's. Uh, he was uh, considered for Bond at one point. Yeah. Is that true? Uh, yeah, I think he's he's great. Like Stringer mm. Bell from The Wire. He's amazing. He's, he's such a good actor. Such a good actor. He is. Um, but I, we're gonna we're gonna call it a night. And I, yeah, yeah, for I sure. No, I know it's probably night. really late for you. Yeah, it's quarter, <laughs> quarter past one. I've got to get up in four and a half hours. So. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've got to. I've got to take my dog for a poo, poo and pee, yeah. and then squeeze my missus in bed before. Uh, you know, okay. Yeah, just to confirm. Yeah, I'm back in bed now. And then I squeeze. Yeah. Bed, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it, this has been an absolute pleasure, Manny. And uh, I'll. I'll hey, be pleasure keep, I'll, is all mine. Sir. I'll be keeping Thank in. You. T- I'll be keeping in touch about the film. Uh, yes. The live event in June. Yes. Uh, barring anything crazy, uh, there should be no delays or anything because I'm getting married on the 29th of March. Uh, uh, May, uh, May, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, May, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, man. Sorry, Beth. Congrats. <laughs> this okay, is so third, you're making this it is official. The third, att- third attempt now because I had COVID pneumonia in December. We, I got my results that I had COVID pneumonia on the day yes. I was putting my wedding suit on. Oh my God. Yeah. Wedding. Yeah. You were saying you did allude to that. I didn't bring it up. Yeah. That's a whole um, other story. I got my results that when I was yeah, putting yeah. my, my suit on in the mirror, uh-huh. it was like a bing bong from the NHS. You've got COVID. And then oh. I was intensive care for four days and two weeks in the hospital. So I, ne- I nearly died. I accepted I was going to die. That's, oh my what, God. that's how, that's how far it went. Yeah. I got, Jeez. I got messages from the head of the university that I work for my Joe job. Uh, yeah. And she never sends messages like that. She sent me a video message saying, because we know I kind of, I've got very good rapport with people. And yeah. Yeah. It was, we'll, we'll have another chat at some other point. We'll just have a, like a little chat. On, online. Yeah. Sometime. Yeah. No, I'd, I'd love to reconnect, man. It's, but it's, uh, you know, yeah, it was insane. It's insane. Getting it is the worst thing ever. I saw someone die next to me in the hospital bed. Uh, yeah. It's uh, it was mental. Anyone that says it's not real can, I'm going to say this can go fuck themselves because. Yeah, no, there's something like it's. Yeah, I don't know why people say that it's not. 
because uh, like, you know, I think maybe in the beginning, yeah. Why would governments want to kill all the money they get? You know what I mean? Like you know, yeah. And like, oh, and the 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 counter to that by these conspiracy theorists is, oh, they want to put they want you to have the vaccine because they want to put a chip in you. I'm like, the chip is in your pocket. It's called your mobile phone. Yes, you're tracked everywhere. They know everything about you. Anyway, there you go. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, these. Anyway, I'm going on a, a rant now. <laughs> oh, no, but, but now I'm going to go and uh, go and wake up. I, I've got to, you know, go and clean my dog up now or something. So. Uh, no yeah, worries. Uh, I just want to wrap it great, up, man. This has been really great. <laughs> I just want to wrap it up by saying, uh, you know, you, you always call me the top man. You're the top man. Thank you for, um, you know, doing this. Thank you for encouraging me. I'm happy you were able to fight through this serious situation. Um, yeah. You know, give my best regards and my hellos to Vicky. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. We will chat again. Um, and yeah, more to come from me, man. Uh, just maybe one last question that I can pose okay. you. Um, even if we are not in isolation, can you bring it back for a third year? Because third, the third time's a charm. It seems like that's, you know, <laughs> that's that's the beauty. Um, you uh, know. Yeah, uh, I'll try my... I tr- Oh, why did you ask that <laughs> you know um, what because it's you're it's really good that you do this you know you can maybe call it something else that's but the, i think that's this difficulty. connection that we have yeah i want to do this every year man like i said i've got a lot yeah. of juice i just want to keep going I'm, until I'm, the wheels uh, fall off i'm looking to do a um a regular a seriously regular podcast about horror and film and not to, I don't want to I don't want to become a, um, a million follower YouTuber, but I want to connect in this way, and I'm 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 definitely going to do that. So there's going to be a lot of things coming out, and I, I, there's there's going to be at least a show. I might even just turn the festival into a, a more a podcast talking to filmmakers about their projects. So it might Something, it might yeah. mature that way, and uh, yeah, <laughs> I can't believe you asked that. <laughs> But I didn't no, mention it earlier. It's, it's, I didn't it mention broke it my earlier. heart, and I kept it in the back of my mind. I'm like, yeah. wait, <laughs> you cannot go away. <laughs> yeah, but it has been fun, and uh, the mm-hmm. judges we've got, like Akiko Sterenberger, who's a poster designer, and she's worked with serious people like um, uh, Coen Brothers. She designed for for a single man. She created Bryce Dallas Howard's company logo. Um, her nice. work is amazing super refreshing and original we've got garth de brune austin he's a documentary filmmaker he just finished his i think his first feature he dp'd about the it's called the last horns of africa about rhino poaching and um how devastating that is in south africa he's based in south africa and we've got michael and jessica chan from the talking with a mouse full um podcast based in toronto talking Mm -hmm. about foodie places to go in Toronto and uh, Michael and Jessica are wonderful people and I love them to bits. And so, yeah, it's a, uh, yeah, it's a difficult one that Manny it's uh really difficult uh, whether, whether to come back or not. And, you know, I, I will debate that for a while. Um, <laughs> I've mentioned it. Already. Yeah. I've mentioned it already on certain other podcasts that it is going to come to an end, but um. Mm. Yeah, it'll it'll mature to something else. It'll grow. It'll like uh, like Mothra in the last Godzilla film. It'll it'll Just you know what I mean. Morph it'll, it into something. Yeah, we got to keep this going. You know. Yeah. So. I, I'm yeah, de- absolutely, man. Well, thank you very much, Manny, for your thank you brilliant film. Really, really, honestly, mean every mean every word of that. And um, I know you only get good, good things on the back end of this. Oh uh, yeah. And yeah, when you're ready to send over the fully finished, polished version, yes, we'll sort it out. Yeah, if it can be yeah, before, that'll be the very de- soon. It's the same. If thing, it can yeah. be before the deadline, that's ideal for potentially sending off to other people and for everyone to see. Yeah. You know, for sure. Yeah. No, I'll I, get it. I, in un- I understood that because I saw. Oh, that's that's super great. Ah, that shot in log. I I understand what's going on. So yeah, yeah. But yeah. No, it's just the, the the little technicalities. But yeah. Um, like I said, I want to get a film in for the festival. Uh, that one is, uh, is very much done. And, um, you know what, come back with the third year. I'm going to have some more magic for you. Please. <laughs> I'll, it's going to be like emotional blackmail for the next year now, isn't it? Right. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> you got to see what we're all up to, right? Year three. Yeah. So 
Absolutely, the, it's getting yeah. better. It's getting better. And it's all because of you. So oh, no, I want to thank you for money, taking yeah. the time, man, for reaching out yeah. to everybody. Um, you're like the, 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 the ray of hope. You come in like a light. We're so excited. I am at least, you know, I get to connect with you. Mm. I get to hear a different perspective, a different mindset, a different ideas. I get some encouragement from you. Um, and it's all good things. It's all things that, uh, yeah. you know, me and you, we love, we live for this. We breathe this. So absolutely, man. Yeah. More power to you. And, uh, uh my sentiments exactly. You, you've, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, enjoy the rest of your evening. I'm gonna, um, I have to wait for zoom to compress the file now. So I'm going to go disappear and, <laughs> I'm not going to make coffee, but I'm going to, I'm going to have some water or something as well. So. No, you know what? I don't know if you, you see the time. It looks like it's, it's Thursday. It's, yeah. it's party time for me. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> add, add five, five hours onto that clock and you know what time it is for me. So mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> all right. You have a good one, mate. And, Alex, uh, always a pleasure. Thank you. We will absolutely be in touch. We will catch soon, up yeah. for sure. Oh, um, and send me, if you've got a, a different headshot compared to the last one you sent me, uh, oh yes for the poster art that'll be really i do you can, if you can either you can pop it on instagram dm or you can email it to me i'm gonna send it to you yeah i'm gonna send it to dm amazing mate and uh, i got you this, anything this will you be need. out this will probably be out next week now yeah okay perfect yeah top well, man thank you so much alex cheers see We're you soon talk again all right bye -bye. thank you bye, -bye.